DII family, this is Brian Foster, and I am super excited to bring to you a new plugin that we are getting ready to production release at the end of this quarter. And it is for our continuous testing integration, formerly known as Xperatest. This application gives us now the opportunity through a release initiative to be able to execute automated based testing cases for Android, iOS, web-based applications. And there is a ton to this. So let's jump into it so that you guys can kind of see the options that we have available now with this brand new plugin. With this new plugin, we have five new tasks that will give individuals the opportunity to do the following. So one is to trigger an Espresso test case. Two is to trigger an XSUI test case for iOS devices and the Espresso ones for Androids. We can get those test results back from those test case executions. And then the last two are for creating a test view and getting those test view results, which are centered around executing and running Appium based test cases via a Jenkins job. I'm gonna go ahead and kick this off so that you guys can actually see this in motion and see how all of this stuff is interacting both within release and with our C-Test engine. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get this going. So here I'm gonna go ahead and call this demo release test one. And this test view number is an input parameter, which is just a random value for now. When I start this release, you can see that we were sending out a notification on Slack, letting individuals know that the text test execution initiative was beginning. Here you can see that we kicked off the Espresso test cases for Android, as well as we kicked off the um, XSUI test cases for iOS, and these are running in parallel. If you go back over here to the C-Test Cloud Engine and you actually go under execution, you can see these jobs now executing. So you can see here Brian.Foster on an iPhone device. You can see over here Brian.Foster on an Asus um, Android device. And so as these jobs are running, they will execute those task runs that had been done. And the way that this is being done is that we can actually pull up these actual tasks and see what's happening here. So we're selecting a run type of fast feedback, which means take my test cases and execute them you know, across devices so that we can get as much fast feedback as we need. Um, you can also do um, complete coverage or coverage um, so that you can actually run all of the test cases on each one of the devices that you want it to execute on. Here, we're specifying the application that we're gonna be testing against and the test cases that we want to test against. You'll notice that this is an actual URL to a repo. And then down here, we're actually specifying a device query. This device query at this moment in time, as you can see, is using an at Android specification, but you could also specify additional parameters to be able to select a different device. All of the documentation will showcase what you can do with these different input parameters. Once these test cases have completed running, you're gonna end up in a situation where we look like this. So here we have the test cases for the Android run. You'll see that we had 11 that were executed, 11 that passed. And so in this case, we went ahead and executed the successful criteria for sending out a successful um, Slack notification on the channel to let people know that those passed successfully. On the iOS for the XSUI test executions, whenever we look at the results here, you'll see that actually all five of our jobs failed. And in this case, you'll actually see that we skipped the success messaging for the XSUI test. And then we went in and we executed a failure notification. And then we also could go in and through an automated nature, create a P1 ticket in an engine like ServiceNow, Jira, or Agility. Um, at this moment in time, just for the sake of the demo, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep going forward though. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that, hey, this was a pre-existing issue that we knew about. And as the QA lead, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off on this. Um, here, you'll notice that we kicked off the um, Jenkins job for the Appiums. I actually skipped this just for the sake of um, runtime, but uh, this is very easy to configure. Again, we'll have documentation centered around this. Here, we created the test view, and then we actually got the results of that Appium job run. And here, you can see that we had a test view ID and a Jenkins build number that executed that Appium build. And you can see here that we had four tests that were executed and four that passed. So obviously, we went into our success criteria. We didn't have to do any of the failure events. You can see that we went ahead and we skipped these because we did not need to execute any of the failure activities. Here now, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to execute my manual testing initiatives because obviously we're always gonna have some level of manual testing capabilities around new features that we're gonna wanna do. Here I have a gate where I'm gonna go in and validate that all the manual feature testing was completed and passed perfect specifications. We uploaded our documentation for cab review. We send out our success notification. Now we're actually in the cab board review. I'm actually going to sign off on this. 
And then now we go in and we're actually deploying directly to the Google store for the Android application and to the Apple store for the iOS app. Um, I actually didn't do this because I didn't want to really deploy to the endpoints, but we can we have plugins to be able to help you manage all of these capabilities. The last step in this process would be one final gate sign off where we just validate that the Google Store app and the Apple Store app have been downloaded and verified. So I'm going to go ahead and complete those activities and say that they are done. And then we go out and we send out a success notification that this entire testing initiative was executed. I hope you guys can see just from this simple template, some really cool capabilities that are available for you within the now brand new plugin. We obviously have this stuff reporting to the dashboard. So here you can see that you know release 1.3 was one of the longest running releases and the unit test for the Expresso and XV test, actually getting those test results back happened to be one of the longest phases. And the longest task actually was the retrieving of the results for the Espresso test cases. And then lastly, you can see here that we can go ahead and we can generate the audit report logs and see all of the different releases that were executed. And then when we click on one of these in detail, you can actually see that we now have the continuous testing plugin as part of the audit and compliance trail initiatives for running releases within your organization. So lots more coming guys, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here for the sake of making this a somewhat short video and demo. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you look forward to this new plugin.